I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds for people to join the room. If anyone can um, give us a little hello and tell us that you can hear us okay, and that everything's good. Hi, everyone. Ah, Joshua, thank you. Hi, Nina. Hi, Amy. <laughs> oh, Amy, you were saying hi to them, sorry. <laughs> Don't need to say hi to me. Okay, um, brilliant, raise a high. Okay, um, thank you so much everybody for joining us today for this talk. Um, today we're gonna to be talking all about, um, thinking about your renovation in terms of its future marketability to make sure that the changes that you're making are gonna be, um, uh, are gonna recover that, hold on to their value, that you're gonna spend your money wisely and that you've been, hopefully recoup that investment uh, when you come to sell your house down the line. And today we've got Lorna with us. Uh, Lorna is the founder of Bonneton Square Estate Agents. Um, Lorna is based in South London and her she sets up an agency that really, it's a very personal experience. Um, what you get with her is a really quality experience and having sold a house, I can tell you that that is what you need when you're under pressure and you're trying to push everybody down the line is a really great agent on your side. Um, not only that is they really care about the design of the properties and taking amazing photos and really just making your house look as good as it can be. So I'm really happy to have uh, you here with us today, Lorna. Do you want to just introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Bonington Square and, and what you do? Yeah, sure. I mean, I've got some um, in my slides. I talk a little bit about uh, there's a bit of an introduction. So right. you want me to get cracking with the slides and there's some yes. pictures sure. of actual Huntington Square and things like that. Um, we should also just say uh, we've got Alba with us today, yes. haven't we? Um, so Alba is Lorna's son and he is along for the ride isn't he uh, he is yeah so if as you well, hear any little noises that's that's yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah he's got really into grapes so um hopefully that will keep him occupied but yes as well as um starting my agency i also became a new mother um just to throw that into the mix so you know uh, why not um okay so if i share these is that, and that's all everyone's seeing that? That's yes, good. I can see it. Can people see it in the chat? Yes, everyone's good. Okay. Yep. Oh, Great. sorry, just before we start, Lorna, people in the chat, um, if you've not been to one before, put your questions in as we go along. Amy's here in the chat, she's going to be fielding them. And then I'll, I will go through the questions right at the end. So just drop them in um, and we'll pick them up. Okay. Thanks, Lorna. Great. Um, so thanks everyone so much for coming to the webinar today. Um, it's my first one really, so really exciting to um, be doing this. Um, as you heard, my name's Lorna and I'm the founder of Bonington Square Estate Agents. And I describe my agency as an estate agent uh, with a social conscience. That's because I wanted to create an agency um, that gives people uh, buying and selling a meaningful and enjoyable experience um, rather than a deeply stressful one, which it can be, um, as you just heard. Um, I also sponsor a bed for a homeless person for a whole year for every house sold. <laughs> um, because I think there's a really obvious link between house buying and um, homelessness that hasn't really yet been explored. And I think if every house sale was linked to helping someone get off the streets, then we could potentially solve homelessness in the UK, which is my goal. So um, that's amazing. So, so I named um, the agency Bonnington Square after the famous square in Vauxhall in South London, um, which I've always admired. There's a picture of it there in the middle. Um, it's got an absolutely amazing history. Um, for those that don't know about it, it was a derelict um, square. It was marked for demolition in the 80s, but then it was um, squatted 
by a group of fantastic people who then transformed the square through um, DIY using different pieces they found lying around um, and basically restored the houses back to their former glory. Um, so I've always loved the square so I, and I've named it up. There's an amazing cafe as well. Anyone in South London, if you haven't been, do go. Um, so I I'm... <laughs> yeah. So um, I am now two years in to my agency um, and have many sales now under my belt, um, which is why I can speak to you all today a little bit about market appeal. Um, but also what qualifies me a little bit to talk to you is that I've just been through and come out of the other side of my own renovation project. Um, my partner is an architect as well, so we've... Um, which is very very useful uh so i've been very lucky about that um but yeah and there's a picture of our house that we bought um on the end there um which was a very very stressful experience another thing that um prompted me to set up the agency um so it's it was a one bedroom flat um in peckham that we bought uh for three seven four in 2020 we spent fifty thousand pounds on renovation works and that included buying the freehold and we're now selling it for six hundred and twenty thousand which we're obviously absolutely thrilled with um which is and beyond actually what we thought we'd achieve but um so that's great um so i just thought i'd talk a little bit more about the project that we've done very briefly um we chose this flat because it had good bones it had good spaces that could be improved and it felt more like a house uh, with all the stairs rather than just a single floor um, with rooms off of one corridor for example there's a lot um, there's so many of those in london um it's in a really really good location and by that i mean it's really close to a number of high streets it's really close to green space um, and it's really close to transport links as well, which I think are the three most important things to consider when you're looking for a project. Um, and then importantly, it was leasehold, which was slightly concerning, um, but the, the council was the freeholder. Uh, so we knew we would be able to purchase the freehold quite easily. Um, if the of course if the owners of the downstairs flat also agreed um it was all a bit touch and go but we did manage to do this for ten thousand, and it was a good job because we would not have been able to raise the ceiling and add to the velux that is shown in these pictures here so before that's the the same view before and after um and you can see we've we've pushed the ceiling up it's a butterfly roof so we've pushed the ceiling up to the roof line added the bellows which has brought in so much light um and just totally transformed the space um it opened it up and this was a huge huge selling point when i was doing the viewings when we put our flat up on the market um so always buy a place either with the freehold already or be quite confident that you will be able to buy the freehold if it's being sold um, as leasehold, because otherwise you'll be quite restricted in what you can do with the work. Um, and also to note, you can only buy the freehold once you've lived in the property for two years. So also um, always take that into account. A couple more before and after shots. Uh, we moved the kitchen entirely from this downstairs area to upstairs um, and when i say upstairs there's a lounge up there's, there was a lounge upstairs which we've uh, made into a kitchen dining room um, this downstairs space then um, it's actually what i'm in now and that created a second bedroom um, which is also used as a living space but this meant we could list the home um, as a two bed which hugely drives up the price which is great And then this is the room at the front of the flat before we um, got in there, uh, which was a huge lounge, which was a total waste of the space. Um, so we made it into a kitchen dining area, as I say, with um, a little space for relaxing as well. 
because we spend most of our time in the kitchen area, we prioritise that. Um, generally, I think that is how people like to live. Um, it's where people spend most time. So I would always prioritise the kitchen dining area and making sure that's all linked so that people can really see themselves, see their family, see people coming over. They can they can understand the space in terms of the sociability and come together over everyone's favourite food. Um, that's the space now and then yeah that is the kitchen at the other end so is the kitchen in an adjacent room or is it all in the same all in the space? same it's all in one that one room space. okay amazing yeah, all in that one room yeah yeah oh, that's lovely thank you and then um, this is quite an important addition too. We cut a very large, somewhat voyeuristic hole in the wall um, between the bedroom and the kitchen, um, which can obviously be privatized again with a blind. Um, but when it's just us here, we have it open because it just, as you can see, creates this absolutely wonderful view through to the greenery of the gardens that are at the back of the house. Um, and then you've also got the windows um, at the front, which you saw in the previous picture there. Yeah. So you've got that double aspect and it just really, again, opened the whole thing out. It's something that most people I think wouldn't think to do. I wouldn't have never have thought to do that if um, James, my partner, had not have suggested it, <laughs> but that's why it's quite oh. useful to have an architect. Um, but yeah, cut a, cut a hole in the wall. So, what to look for when house hunting for a project? Number one is, for me, is location. And by this I mean check the resale prices of other things that are done up in that same area that have sold recently to make sure that you'll make a good profit. There's a really, and you can do that on Right Move, you just put, um, there's a, for those that don't know, you just, click a little button that says include um, under offer and sold subject to contract. So you can see what's actually sold. And then there's obviously a history um, and a list of, of everything in the area as well. Um, but there's a really, really good example of this. Um, if you look at two very similar mod <coughs> modernist estates, um, one in Han Hill and one in East Dulwich, that, that's all in South London. The uh, modernist estate in Han Hill is called Delawick Crescent, where project houses are kind of being sold for six, seven, five, and then houses that are done up are being sold for like eight fifty. Um, and then, literally five minutes down the road, is another mod modernist estate called Arnhem Way, where project houses are selling for six two five, but done up houses are only selling for six fifty. Um, so. The location and the resale, it's super important to check that. Um, and again, the things that affect that, I think, are proximity to amenities, transport links, and green spaces. The houses in Arnhem Arm Way do not have that. So despite them being sold for similar, like, as a project, being sold for a similar price, um, they're just they're not selling for uh, as done up project houses they're not they're not making those that, that money back so really important really to check out um good bones this is my favorite phrase <laughs> um you want a doer upper um but not too much of a doer upper <laughs> yes if the aim is to make money um don't buy a complete complete wreck because it will cost you more there'll be so many hidden and horrible things that come out and you just don't want that if the rooms are in the right place at least then you're massively onto a winner um by that i mean kind of if if the floor plan would need a bit of a rejig for example if the bathroom is um in the wrong place if you have to get go through a bedroom to get to it um, which isn't nice. Um, then check that you can move that or check that you can change that. Um, check that there are already services running to the location you want to move it to. 
if that's if that's not the case that's fine but you need to budget for that um yeah but so something with all the kind of pieces in the right place that just then needs um a bit of an overhaul or you know uh depending on budget um that's what that's the best thing to look for um up and coming areas be very savvy about choosing um some houses in up and coming areas um kind of look at where migration is happening and this of course in london happens um all over the place at the moment there's very much um it, people are moving further and further out um, because things are becoming so expensive um in other areas it might be different but um estate agents should generally know what's happening with migration so um when deciding on an area definitely speak to lo local agents to get a feel for popularity of, of different areas and then you want to find the place where people are starting to move to that's becoming popular um, you can also look at has the high street seen recent investment um are there good coffee shops springing up um are there you know are there nice hairdressers there's crystal palace in south london as well recently um saw a lot of regeneration on the high street and now there's a lot of nice shops coming in and the house prices are soaring so um and that's been happening over the last sort of three years so you can see the trend um and just and it's really important to just jump on that when you see it um and be really savvy about that um and then finally, uh, you should look for street precedents whenever you're looking to buy a house. So if you're looking to add a bedroom and you're looking to do a, a dormer in the roof, um, but the street, for example, might have, which is what we've experienced actually, has an unbroken run of butterfly roofs, a butterfly roof being a roof that's like that rather than like that. Um, and there are no dormers in the area that it might be that you can't do that because of planning restrictions. Um, so definitely check council design um, guidelines um, and other planning permissions that have been granted in the area. Um, some councils are more lenient than others. Um, so that's, yeah, that's definitely one to check. That's really helpful. Okay, and then renovation choices that sell um so firstly improve the social spaces um as i mentioned before we use um kitchen dining the most and i do think generally that is um the same for most people um very rarely do I encounter people looking at homes saying we want a separate kitchen and lounge and separate dining. It's all kind of, it, people love it when it's all one now and it's all connected. Or if it's not connected, at least there is some way of, of making a connection, whether it's a corridor or a, a voyeuristic hole or something. Um, that just means if people are hanging out in the lounge, hanging out in the kitchen, they can all they can you can still say hi you can still shout do you want a cup of tea um it's those small things that and really think about how people live um when you're improving those social spaces um yeah so definitely prioritize that um adding a bedroom that this is just a very typical and very classic um adding a bedroom adds money yeah it does adding a bedroom <laughs> adds <laughs> It adds it adds a huge amount. Um, at least uh, in London, generally, it's around fifty thousand um, at the at the price points under a million. Um, so if you can add if you can add a bedroom, um, do that. Whether that be a putting a dormer in the roof, this can cost in London. This costs around eighty thousand um, pounds, but it's still worth doing. Um, along with the rest of the renovation, you will definitely get that money back. I don't know really the cost outside of London, but um, I would always say it's worth doing. Or perhaps if you can add a bedroom um, within the house, if you can use a room that is not used well as a bedroom instead, 
that would just squeak, squeak the product up. Um, and then improve light. So um, one of the things that, or maybe the key thing that puts people off if I'm doing viewings, if it's dark or if I have to turn lights on and people always want to say, can I just see that without the light on please? Because um, natural light is huge. It's incredibly healthy to have natural light. Um, it does us all wonders. So um, we actually here in our project um, made the windows bigger. We put new such windows in, but we also made them bigger. Um, and, and then put the Velux in in the window, uh, in the roof line. Um, so just get as much light as you can in, and it's definitely worth investing in that because when people then walk in and come for viewings and see it's just totally light filled, they fall in love with it. It, it happens. It happens every time. Darkness really puts people off. Mm -hmm. So definitely improve the light. Um, and then finally, it's just to focus on movement around the house which is something people don't tend to think about um but and um, subconsciously you're looking at the rooms themselves you're looking is the are the bedrooms big is the lounge big but you're not thinking how do i get there is the corridor if the corridor is really narrow or if you approach if you come upstairs to a very small landing and you're having to then fiddle about with doors and it all gets a bit much it's it's not an enjoyable experience to walk around the house. So if you can, um, and I mean, we did this here as well. We actually took space from the bathroom. So we made the bathroom smaller, but made the landing space a lot bigger so that when you arrive at the, on the landing, it's such, it's just a, 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 it's, it's a spacious um, feeling, you, you know, you, you feel, you don't feel cooped up. Um, so, that is that is massively something to focus on. I think um, is the is the movement around the house rather than just looking at the size of the rooms. And then, just very quickly, I had to touch on the importance of color. Um, be very savvy about color choices. Farrow and Ball actually pair things really really nicely. So, if you're looking at um, what what color choices to use they pair things up really well um but um for a project and thinking about reselling don't go for anything too bold so i've just put some examples of colors here that people tend to like when i'm doing viewings um but they're always very calm palettes um it's something that people can imagine their furniture in and they can imagine their um, own color choices on the walls, or they can imagine having their whatever, if they're having, having, having some artwork, or they can imagine it, that all in the space, um, rather than if it was bold choices, which could be fantastic, but it's quite unlikely that you'll choose something that the buyer happens to be that their, their favorite color as well. So always go for a very calm and kind of clean color palette that allow people to put their own stamp on. Um, and allow them to envisage their furniture in the space. And then how are we doing for time? Oh, great. Okay. Yes, we've got quite a few questions. So, um, I oh, cool. Just... Okay. Well, that's great. I will, I can just then to finish, I was just going to whiz through basically um, a couple of examples of projects um, from my favorite architects. Uh, or some of them um, to highlight some of the points I've just made and hopefully um, inspire a little bit. So firstly is um, Yard Architects. Um, so this is a really nice example of a side extension. Um, usually people are a bit daunted by these because what they improve the social space so dramatically but they can be quite expensive. Um, this is a really nice example because it uses um, cheaper materials, so using timber. You can also use, um, a lot of people just build like a conservatory and use glass. You lose a little bit of heat that way, but it's a, it's a much cheaper way of doing it. Um, because extending the social space this way adds an, in, an incredible amount of value. Um, but just being savvy about the materials, make sure the, the costs are... Are kept low, um, 
which is great. And then um, this is my favorite practice. They're called Sermon Western Architects. Um, I just love everything they do. They're amazing. They're set up by uh, Tom Sermon and Percy Weston. Uh, they've also just completed a, a self-build project in Peckham, which is called Peckham House. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's got a really cracking rooftop garden, which is really, really inspiring. Um, I, can't, I, I won't even do it justice if I try and explain it, but um, <laughs> it's, it's stunning. It brings in light as well as having a garden at, on the roof. So um, definitely, definitely check it out. It's all online. You can you can look at the pictures. It's just it's really really cool. Um, this project that I've pictured here is called Surbiton Springs. It's um, it's a newly built uh, detached house in Surrey, and again it's just absolutely stunning. They've um, they've done an an amazing job with this. Um, but what I wanted to show was the treatment of. Um, the, the spaces that you use to move around the, the house. So this is a really nice example, this image, because um, they've made them absolutely huge. There's light absolutely pouring in from above, um, which is an exceptional design choice. Again, people don't often think about these spaces um, and you focus on the size of the rooms themselves, but if you have these free and big spaces to move around, it just feels so much calmer. And you can see here, it's like a nice experience to then walk through the house. So I just love that that image and um, what they've done there. And then just finally is um, Nim Tim Architects, who are actually based in Peckham. And this is a really, really nice example of a light filled extension. It's again, um, I think using relatively cheap materials, you've got a lot of timber in there. Um, I don't know about the flooring, but it looks like it was probably um, done at quite low cost. It looks maybe like a, a lino, like a... Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a concrete poured or if it was a lino, but either way, it's yeah, I think they, they probably would have done their best job to keep the cost down. Um, yep. But this, I thought, really, really exemplifies um, some great colour choices because the whole thing feels very, very modern. It kind of sort of pops somehow, but the palette is actually very, very subtle. Um, which will allow the buyer to envisage their own furniture and their own belongings um, in the space, which I think is really clever and definitely something that will help sell. Um, yeah, so. That's amazing, thank you. I actually, my favorite image of the whole thing is your hallway. I just think the difference between that, bit of, that bit of the wall coming into the hallway space and then having it open and just yeah. how, you know, if you're arriving into the flat, what an incredible difference that makes. And the fact that you reduce the room to get that, I just think that just, that's everything, isn't it? And, and the natural light, I think that really sums up a lot of what you can do in, in, a, in a home that yeah. maybe isn't even that expensive. And then I guess the only other thing that I just wanted to, that just occurred to me as you were talking is, I think with, you know, the kind of more unusual alterations, like maybe cheaper materials or, you know, your interesting look through, like with the, the whole, I think sometimes like an architect's eye or a designer's eye to be able to take the cheaper things or the more unusual things and just make sure that they are just so, do you know what I mean? So that they are, they fit their, you don't want anything and I guess you don't want anything unusual that then feels not well done or, or, or something you could ver you could definitely verge into the kind of oh look at this strange thing that's happened here you know I could imagine that that might put sellers off the, you know if you're if you're being creative like having that person to help you nail it and absolutely get it so that people feel yeah. comfortable with it I think is a really yeah. kind of interesting point because all, all of your projects were 
architect led and um, that you gave the example yeah. of, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am a big advocate of um, using an architect. I think they um, they can not only save you money, but some very, very small um, design choices can actually make you then a lot of money yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> and this is this is the best example that I have. The I mean, this space here. You can see as well we have a um i always want to call it a lazy susan but it's it's there's it's another oh the the rack kind of thing yeah it's actually on a pulley system and we yeah. drive all our clothes up there because again another thing is um in a small flat where a space is that you've got those horrible clothes dryers that you have to get out and they take up so much room um so that's another area where we could um we thought about how people live what you want to like get rid of what's not nice and you know you just pull away all the clothes up into that <laughs> loft space um, it was messaging me cool. saying it's called a dolly maid i've never Thank heard you. that before that's we had cool. a <laughs> we had, always called it a rack um but yeah it's, yeah it's grabbing those opportunities isn't it and i think it should also caveat with saying that like not all, you'll get the most out of using every nook and cranny with an architect that designs your interior spaces because not everybody does. So if you're yeah. if you're going with an architect that's doing an extension and they're just looking at the, the basic layout, but they're not gonna do detailed drawings for your interiors, that's a very, it's a different type of thing. So we're talking about an architect that looks at the inside and you know any kind of reconfigurations yeah but it also might be worth i mean if you are thinking of looking for an after looking or getting an architect's opinion but don't want to spend heaps on having them do all the planning and all the drawings and you know a, a full-scale design it might just be worth getting in touch and getting them around for a, a what you know an hour walk around consultation yeah. and just to say um okay this is these are a couple of things you could do because very quickly i find um an architect will go into a space and immediately know what and happening. will be able yeah. to tell you um things that you wouldn't you won't have thought about um yeah. and it's, it's definitely worth doing that um and i always i always think like whenever friends show us their plans especially with the dormer loft extension or um other extensions usually it's just like um you look at them and you say okay that's all great put a roof light here over the stairs like that you know they never it never gets added in and um i just think that's such an easy game changer and again yeah that's just an architect saying a different type of architect literally just drawing a box and of course you can get your technician or whoever to add that in um at not as much cost so but um enough about my questions and my thoughts i need to get on to um, our questions so i'm going to start with joshua um I am looking to add a bathroom to the first floor of a two floor cottage in Wales by eking into one of the bedrooms, one of the two bedrooms. Currently, the main bathroom is off the kitchen downstairs, which I am turning into a shower room and a pantry. The easiest and cheapest thing to do for the new upstairs bathroom is to make it en suite. But does that limit its resale appeal? Um, so where, so will you have a will you have a, a family bathroom Hang it, on. Will, this is, it will be a family to... shower room downstairs with family a pantry shower room downstairs. and an ensuite upstairs instead of a uh, at the moment it doesn't have a at the moment it doesn't have one a bathroom upstairs right the main bathroom now is downstairs ah, off the kitchen downstairs which i'm turning into okay got you um no i think that's great actually nice to have an ensuite that always attracts people the only thing i would be cautious of is only having a shower room um i i'm not obviously okay with the area or the kind of people that you'd be looking to sell to but um uh people if if it's young families they'll always want a bath so if there's only if there's no bath option um just be mindful of that um otherwise i wouldn't say that would limit the resale yeah and with a, a cottage you're always going to be slightly limited and people are probably used to used to that i guess yeah um from alice uh, we're living in a semi-detached victorian terrace in exeter devon we have a classic narrow hallway so we're looking to widen double width the hall 
So we have a grander entrance, which we can then add a WC cloth room to. Do you think this will add value or just curve yeah. the feel? Yes, yes, do that, definitely, yes. So, we're looking yeah. wide. so that would be widened with an extension, I guess. I'm presuming that is yeah. the case as well. But even if it's not, even if you have to eat into the room slightly, um, the first thing people see when they walk in is the entrance. And if, if they feel cramped, they'll then have that in their mind for the rest of the viewing. Mm -hmm. So if you can widen the entrance, always do that. Yes. I love this. Me and Amy are always going on about entrances, so I'm glad that yeah. <laughs> you, you are good sharing. Okay, Fiona, yeah. um, how about the cost of a zinc roof on a porch and canopy? Aesthetically more pleasing than EDPM, etc., but more expensive. Is it worth the cost? Now, that I don't know. That is... Uh, a zinc yeah. roof on a porch. Yeah. I don't know enough about yeah. zinc roofs <laughs> to be able to answer that. I'm really yeah. sorry. I guess it would really um, depend on the aesthetic of the whole house, right? Because um, yeah. if you're if it was just the porch and the canopy, um, I guess it's how much it's appealing your whole curb appeal in 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 terms yeah. of the rest of the look of the house. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know what the comparable costs are. Um, if I would imagine about, a few thousand, so I, I was you can say it's we're talking about, but I'm thinking two or three thousand different. That's what I was thinking as well. Um, if it's a couple of, and it also depends on the price point of the house. Um, if we're kind of up at the uh, like the 800 plus mark, then yeah, people look for quality. Um, in, this is in London. Um, anything lower, um, people start want, uh, starting to want to save money. Um, yeah, sorry. I hope well, that's helpful. I think, you know, that's relevant for London, but I think it's also relevant in other places, isn't it? If you're in a, if you're in a high uh, value area um, yeah. and people are looking at lux luxury things, um, then that is going to appeal. But if you're if you're making a nice home in a nice area, but it's not a, a luxury area, having your house with the zinc uh, porch um, might not be as uh, required or wanted in in that situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. For that one, I would just do some research and have a look and see if you can find anything else that's got that or has that similar um yeah and what the what the kind of sale rates are right um claire is asking regarding improving social spaces what's your opinion on kitchen diner lounge in a singular space is this less desirable than kitchen diner with a separate lounge um generally people prefer um singular space singular big space mm -hmm. um that being said i would see if you could if you can kind of portion it off if it's all in, sort of within the same room but then cleverly kind of portioned off I saw a nice house the other day that had um the whole downstairs was a kitchen lounge but and they just put um it was quite a small house and they put piano in the middle uh which kind of separated the spaces but but not so um yeah there's some clever ways of kind of portioning it but if it generally if it's all in the same room then that's more desirable um very rarely do people say i actually prefer a separate lounge some do but the majority want it all in the same yeah. right that's interesting um philippa is asking i have planning on a butterfly roof any idea how much planning adds to value um, wow, congratulations on getting planning on <laughs> yeah. so cool. <laughs> we could not do that. Um, our council was not happy about that, but so that's great. Um, planning, how much it adds to value. Um, as a ballpark, 10 to 10,000, 10 to 15. Um, obviously the cost of getting planning um i mean it's relatively low if you use an architect it's um i think it can be sort of three to five thousand but 
um, saving the faff of doing it, especially then got the design as well. Um, people will, people love to, to if there's planning with with something. So also if you if it's fresh like a fresh planning and you you've got it for three years, um, so people have three years in which to start the work. That's obviously a lot better. If you've got planning, but it's only but you have to start the work within six months or you lose it, then it wouldn't add too much to the value. Okay, so fresh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've realised I'm going backwards, Lydia. This is one of the first questions. Can I ask a boring question? How did you deal with the hob extraction by putting the kitchen at the front? Oh my god, this that is not boring because we actually agonised. <laughs> Um, yeah, we were thinking, do we, um, do we need to put, um, we had building control around, do we need to put uh, a hole in the wall and actually go out? Um, but in the end, because it was by a large window, we just bought um, an internal extraction. Um, so it just uh, recycles um, the air from that. We didn't actually have to punch through the wall, which would have been, would have been possible because the house next door to us is, is lower. Um, but there would have been part of all agreements there would have been um yeah a bit of a faff in case the neighbors ever wanted to build up that would have been a problem yeah. so we just kept it all internal and that was fine with building control right um, so probably a bit of a fancier um cooker an extract but worth it in terms of building costs <laughs> yeah it's i think class steam class steam, um extractor but um, yeah, and it's just got the pads that you insert. I don't know how right. much okay. we'll get into this, but yeah. and then you yeah. just um, you just take those. I think you replace them every couple of years or something. Um, okay. Yeah, but but building building control, we're happy with that. So that's great. Um, I think that is oh oh there are more that I haven't seen. Okay, there's just two more. We've got uh, just a couple more minutes, so we'll just whiz through these and then and then that will be it. Um, I've got Anna, we've got a listed Georgian house in Bath and the stone stained dirty black on the outside. We're doing up the inside, but it's gonna cost thousands to clean the stone on the front. But I guess it's worth it as it's so sad looking on the outside with the dirt. No one makes any money doing up homes around here as it's so expensive, but we don't want to lose too much. Uh, oh, I didn't know that, that's interesting. I've actually been looking at places in Bath recently because um, it's so much cheaper than in London. Um, but that's that's. I'm sorry to hear that no one makes money doing that. That's. I wonder why. That's strange. I think um, the relative house price is, although it might be slightly cheaper than London, it's not yeah. massively cheaper than London. And with the prices of doing up now, yeah, maybe that just. Maybe there's a ceiling. Yeah. Um, so that you. Yeah, you have to be incredibly savvy then about what you actually do. Um, cleaning the stone front um yes i'd probably say it was worth it because on firstly on right move everyone looks at the external shot of the house and if it looks like a beautiful house then you want to come and see it so you'll get more viewings and then when people do come and see it the first impression will be really really good and the first impressions are very important so um yes if it's if it's possible to do with budget and you think um it's not going to be too detrimental to, to the finances of course um i would i would do it yeah great okay brilliant um i have one question that i've forgotten that i have to ask from claire who we had yesterday um so her question was they live in a, a great size two and a half bedroom semi-detached house in the east midlands um she initial thinking shows that we could add one bedroom upstairs this would be the same size as the existing rooms a regular double um a loft conversion isn't possible however there is another option to create a bedroom downstairs that would sit off the main reconfigured living space and opens onto the back garden new downstairs new shower could go next door almost creating a sweet effect benefits we could create space that's slightly larger than anything that we could create upstairs and it's handy for elderly parents but I guess what she's asking is um is that room downstairs going to be less valuable when it comes to selling as opposed to a smaller but upstairs bedroom um 
Okay, so a couple of things to consider. When she says um, the doors open, <laughs> the doors yeah. open up onto the garden from the bedroom. Are you then that yeah. if you're then having to go yeah. from the social space through yeah. to the through yeah. the bedroom to get to the garden? That's um, that's not so nice. That's yeah. a bit that could be a bit problematic. Mm -hmm. um, and in which case, I would try and create the the bedroom upstairs and perhaps downstairs that you could. It, maybe this is a scenario where you could move the bathroom downstairs and create another bedroom upstairs. Um, if it's not the case and there's access to the garden via other means, um, I mean that's fine. Adding a bedroom is adding a bedroom. It, it should be done. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to see, um, without, uh, without a floor plan, but then that I think would also be a good question to ask an architect because there's probably a number of different configuration options, um, that would work better. And whatever the, if the, whatever the architect says, they will have thought about the way people live. And the, and that is valuable for house buying and selling. So um, for that one, I'd probably consult an architect. And again, as I say, Phil, I think most practices, if you send them a floor plan and just say, thinking about doing this, what do you have any thoughts? They probably just send you back an email with some interesting thoughts for free. Um, or they would say, you know, we could do a, a quick consultation. A lot of people do consultations yeah. now, you know, like an hour yeah. chat. Yeah. Um, and I would say it would definitely be worth it for with a question like that. Yeah. Okay. I know we're we're getting on our time limit a little bit, but I've got Edward. Um, uh, I'm thinking to replace our conservatory with a glass veranda to have a better mm -hmm. uninterrupted view of the garden, as I don't like those small dwarf walls on the conservatory. Do you think glass veranda may reduce the value or is it a good option? No, I think that sounds like a really nice option. People don't really like conservatories anymore. They're seen as quite old fashioned. So a glass veranda. Um, there's also something called a garden room, which is probably a similar thing, um, but worth checking out um, like garden rooms. Um, they're also very beautiful things. Okay. Um, but I'd say that was definitely worth doing. Yeah. Okay. Final one. Um, oh, I don't know where this came in, but in response to that question, could you lift the impression of the interior with planting? But I don't know what that, um, I, I, because they've not come in order, but does planting have um, a, a, an impact on, on house sales? I mean, yes. Um, again, like house plants are we talking about? I think um, so. Yeah. Um, uh, greenery again, like light, is very important for health, um, and people kind of light up when they if there's plants and light, and it's all so. So yes, um, interior is massively helped with house plants and planting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all we've got time for. But um, I feel like those questions were great, and um, it's been a really informative talk. Um, and I hope everybody's um, enjoyed that. Um, if you are in the vicinity of South London and have a house to sell or want advice about selling a house, please do reach out. It's um, hello at bonningtonsquare.com. Um, um, and I'm sure, Lorna, you'd be happy to um, help people with that. Um, yes, any follow-up questions or, yeah, anything, just drop me an email. Happy, I would love to chat. So, yeah. And, and you also do, um, obviously, home valuations as well, don't you? Yep, yep. Yeah. And it, I'm right, you're not limited to South London. You, it's possible to do sales in other places. In, in the That's right. Yes, happy yep. to do sales. Um, we've done sales in Norfolk. We, we've gone as far as um, down south in uh, Bournemouth. So, um very happy to do that it's just then a case of um the owner would have to do the viewing yes okay. uh, but there would yeah. be a reduced fee obviously with with all of that so um so yeah but yeah for it, love that to travel great oh well, thank you so much for being with us today and um thank thanks for really Albert for being uh, a champion <laughs> there and getting on in the background minding his own business <laughs> 
um he's done amazingly well oh okay thanks everybody thanks for joining us okay bye bye